Hey guys, welcome back to the Style of Beauty Doctor here on YouTube, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about vitamin C, the different forms, why you might need it in your skincare routine, how to store it, when to use it, what you should use it with, and what you shouldn't use it with. Don't keep watching. I'm going to try so hard not to say vitamin C because I just love the way that that sounds. But See, I when we say true, vitamin C, I would say true to my American self and say vitamin. Yeah, no, that's fine. I would say probably go in between. Yeah. <laughs> I'm DJ Ayodele and I am an esthetician and I am based in London. Um, and I have a clinic in central London and we specialize in looking after skin of color, most especially black skin. Um, yes. I have been in the industry for over 12 years now. Um, I am also on the British Beauty Council Advisory Board. I'm also on the Black Aesthetics Advisory Board. So I um, you know, sit very much within an advisory capacity as well to the industry about um, various things that champion black skin and, and champion black women in this space because, you know, it's not a space that we have always you know, been in, in great numbers. So I, I try and, 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 you know, shuffle in and make space for other women who look like me, um, you know, to get in on the action as well. Vitamin C is an antioxidant. So it's one of the best antioxidants we have for skin. And, you know, so the question is, what is an antioxidant? And what does it do? An antioxidant, really, the simplest way to describe it is that it protects the skin from premature aging caused by uh, what we call free radical damage. So, okay, what is free radical damage? Damage caused to the skin by pollution, by UV rays, by poor lifestyle habits, by poor sleep, poor diet, smoking, um, you know, so those are the things that really do affect the skin. So we need antioxidants to help us combat that, um, the, the, the damage they have to the skin. And vitamin C is one of the best antioxidants we have in that regard. It also helps to protect your skin against the, the, the damage of the sun by making, by, by really propping up collagen. So it, it encourages your skin and supports your skin in propping up collagen and producing collagen. And, you know, collagen is the scaffolding of the skin. So if you have good collagen, you know, you have good firm skin that's resilient as well. Well, you know that the sun will attack um, collagen to, to break it down. That's one of the things that the sun does. So if you're using a good vitamin C, a good ascorbic acid, you are helping your skin fight off that you know, damage the sun causes, um, because that damage on, on the surface of the skin, it's just fine lines and wrinkles. And, you know, nobody's trying to um, get fine lines and wrinkles before their allo allocated time, you know. We're, right, right. We're right. all trying to put that off as long as possible. So vitamin yeah. C will also help you do that. So if you want to get that done, then you, you are looking at l ascorbic acid, try and avoid the derivatives where possible, because you're not going to get that potency that you need. Vitamin C has L-ascorbic acid, which is the purest and sort of most potent form of vitamin C you can get. Um, it also is also one of the most unstable forms of vitamin C you can get. Mm -hmm. So it, it quickly becomes ineffective if it's sort of presented to you in the wrong um, wrong format. Um, you also have a scorbopalmitate, which is another type of, it's more of a derivative. So after mm. you have um, ascorbic acid, everything else is a derivative of vitamin C, which means mm -hmm. that it's not going to be as potent um, but what it will be is that it will be less irritable to the skin. Um, and in that, in that regards, you also have uh, magnesium ascorbyl palmitate, which also is um, a, a derivative, but it's less, it's, again, it's less potent. The upside is less potency can mean um, less irritation because vitamin C is one of those ingredients where you have to use it within a certain parameter. So if it's more than 20% in your in your product, you will find that the skin gets more irritated. So for example, for my skin, 20% will make my skin irritated. I can sort of stick alongside the, the between 10 and 12% sort of vitamin C um, mm. uh, content. Mm. 
that is absolutely fine because it's one of those things as well within skincare where we kind of feel like if we have the highest percentage, if we have the most potent, then that's what's going to be best for us. Not mm -hmm. necessarily. You don't always need to do the most when it comes to your skincare and, and, and the ingredients. If your skin is happy at that uh, 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 derivative and using that percentage, that's absolutely fine. You carry mm -hmm. on because what you might find is that if you then listen to this and you go, do you know what? I'm gonna now go get myself a 20% L-ascorbic acid and you then get your skin irritated, that's not gonna be great. You can try sort of less potency versions. That's not a problem at all. And you will still get good results from them. You mm -hmm. will get, it might be slower results, but ain't nobody going anywhere. So right. <laughs> no, no particular <laughs> rush, no particular yeah. rush here. Well, first of all, for black women, I would say that if you're looking to fight pigmentation, going for a vitamin C alone isn't gonna get you very far. Right. Because vitamin C, in my opinion, has this, uh, gives off this impression that it's a pigmentation fighter, mm -hmm. which it does do. But I think that's more of a secondary benefit to vitamin C. That is not its primary purpose. So mm -hmm. its primary purpose is being an antioxidant for your skin and, and propping up that collagen. That's its primary purpose. One mm -hmm. of the things it will do whilst it's doing that purpose is also help to tackle and fade pigmentation and brighten the skin. So for me, um, I wouldn't go that down that road. If, I, if I'm if i trying to tackle pigmentation, I wouldn't be looking for a vitamin C serum. I'd more mm -hmm. be looking for serums where their primary purpose is to fade pigmentation and vitamin C isn't one of them. So that's the first right. thing I would, first sort of advice I'd, or, or myth I would break is mm -hmm. that the vitamin C in itself is an antioxidant first and foremost, not a pigmentation um, product. It will give you some benefit, but not, mm -hmm. not, what, not what you're looking for. Not what you're looking for. Issues. So therefore I tend to prefer vitamin C within another product. So okay. for example, one of my most favorite uh, uh, vitamin C's you can, you, or, or products that have vitamin C in them is um, from the Skin Better Science range. Um, it's, uh, there's a product within it called Eventone. And that's got a version of vitamin C in it that alongside other pigmentation products. But generally, if you're looking, if you know, you're, you're just edging in and you're like, okay, what is this whole thing about? Where do I want to go? You guys in the States have this brand called Hyper. We don't mm. have it here yet. Now, that's a good vitamin C if you're just looking to edge in. And she is a black woman who has uh, developed that brand. So she kind of knows the, some of the struggles that we we face when it comes to um, hyperpigmentation and black skin. So that's a really good one to go for. Um, the, uh, the La Roche-Posay um, vitamin C is also a very good one to go for. But you do have to make sure and be mindful you store it in a dark place because yeah. you don't want it to oxidize on you. I don't know, do you guys have the brand Murad? Oh yeah. Yeah, if you have Murad, then the vitamin C in that range is great as well. Yeah. So, um, I mean, they have a whole segment with vitamin C um, within it. So I would be going at those. Those would be my entry points because you don't want to yeah. go in too low because if you go in too low, um, you're not necessarily going to get much benefits. You're going to be using it and thinking, well, what's going on here? Nothing is happening. Yeah. While right. if you kind of enter into that middle point, then mm -hmm. you have all the levels to then go up to and, and increase. So that's where I would actually start. Vitamin C can, can come in into your skincare routine at many different levels. It's a multitasker. It can do all the things you, you, you just mentioned. So vitamin C would come in in the morning. So it would be an AM product where you would use it after cleansing. Um, you would use it before sunscreen. It actually boosts the performance of your sunscreen as well. So you would use it in that sense. It can be combined with any other active ingredient. Um, so long as your skin is tolerant of those other ingredients as well. Um, it's also great to look for vitamin C that has other antioxidants with it as well. So whether that be re uh, resveratrol or whether that be like green tea extract or caffeine, it's always great to, to have a, I mean, I always say formulation is king, so it's great to have a cocktail of ingredients together. So vitamin C in the morning, because you're going to use things like your other actives, like your retinol, for example, you're going to use that at night. So you're not going to get any clash or irritation. So yeah. uh, 
it pairs with everything well. Even if you um, say you use any alpha hydroxy acids to sort of exfoliate your skin um, after cleansing, that's not a problem. You can still use your vitamin C as well. If people are nervous um, or, you know, a little bit apprehensive sometimes, I'd always say, well, on the days that you are using your alpha, alpha hydroxy acid, like your glycolic or your lactic or something like that, then leave off the vitamin C that day. That is not a problem. But generally for most people and for most skin types, you can wash, use maybe a wipe that has an alpha hydroxy acid, put your vitamin C on, put your moisturizer and your sunscreen on and you're good to go. Yeah. So, um, it fits in very easily. I, I think sometimes we have an apprehension because it's fair of the unknown. You've never used it before. Mm -hmm. So you, you, know, you don't really know what's going to happen. And there's all these myths and, and concept, misconceptions out there. I'm glad you said myth and misconception because that's how I wanted to segue right into that. There is a myth and a misconception about using vitamin C during the day, which when I first heard someone say it, I was like, that's not what I hear all the time because you know, if you're going to, if vitamin C is such a great antioxidant, wouldn't we want to use it during the day? So what do you, <laughs> what do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, that would make sense to me. And, and that is how I advise people to use it. I, I, I have sat in meetings with um, some of the sort of top skincare scientists and, and cosmetic chemists. And, you know, I have never ever really come across, yes, you can pop, pop vitamin C on at night. That That isn't a problem. But if you want to get your best out of your product, use it when it's intended yeah. for the daytime because yeah you are looking to, to combat that, that free radical damage that you're getting from constant being exposed to pollution, living in a big city. You know, we, we lead all these crazy lifestyles now where, you know, our skin is tired, it is sluggish, it is not, at, it, it is not performing at its optimum best. So you also want to help to protect the skin against the damage, the constant damage you're getting from UV. And if vitamin C is something that helps to stimulate collagen, and UV is during the day. When you add it all up, <laughs> it makes sense to me. It may, it, no, it's not even the case of it makes sense. That is the way you use it. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. It's, it's not about, oh, it makes sense. Yes, it makes sense, but yes. that's how you use it. You use it during the day to give you as much protection. It is a protective ingredient. You also yeah. have your, you have repairing ingredients, you have protective ingredients. Vitamin C is a protective ingredient. For me, so long I keep it simple. So long as you wash your face well, mm -hmm. um, you need to exfoliate with um, uh, uh, um, an alpha hydroxy acid or something like that. You go ahead, um, but keeping it simple and keeping your skin damp, especially if you're just using a, a, an L ascorbic, keep your skin damp to help that penetration because of the water. That's all mm -hmm. you need to do. I don't think we need to overcomplicate. Yeah. Um, Skincare. I find sometimes it's, it's a little bit too complicated. And the the way the formulations are made nowadays, it's to enable you to live your best life quickly and get your best skin quickly. No manufacturer or brand is out there trying to make it a science lesson or make you have a degree in chemistry before you can use their product. It's designed for you to wash, apply and move on. A lot of this stuff, it's like, all right, I need to break out my pH scale and where does it fall? Yeah. I need a dropper and I need to do, it, it becomes like, it's, it's just like, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, you get there? people asking sometimes, you know, what is the pH value of that product? And I'm like, is it going to stop you using it? Because it, it kind of, you're, you're, you know, we, we've got the internet open to us at the moment, you know, and so therefore we have a lot of information at our fingertips, but it's almost like if you're going to use a product, and you're not a cosmetic uh, cosmetic scientist and you're asking about the ph the acidity the this the that unless you have the accompanying degree to understand what all of that means right you're not going to get that information is obviously is almost of no value to a certain right. extent because how are you interpreting it and what are you benchmarking it against when you're when you're doing all of that yeah so, most of the products there are over the counter products they've been safety tested you know so unless you're creating one for yourself 
or a dermatologist has told you otherwise, a lot of these products, they're quite straightforward and simple to use. Yeah. Um, you're getting them from maybe a clinic or someone like myself, an esthetician, you get given all the instructions. We sometimes we make it too too overcomplicated, and but that's because of the amount of information we have at our fingertips. Do not keep it on your windowsill. That's okay. the that's the best thing. Don't keep it. Yeah. On your um, you don't want your product exposed to, to sunlight. Um, Start with looking for products that come in opaque delivery system. So an opaque bottle, so you can't actually see the product inside. Mm -hmm. Start with products that maybe have a pump dispenser because then you're not opening and closing the product all the time. Um, those are the best sort of uh, packaging solutions to go for first. Even before you start even then thinking about how you store the product at home, try and go for those types of products. They are they are always going to cost you a little bit more because mm -hmm. they have a sophisticated delivery system of a, as opposed to maybe a product that's just got a dropper and a pipette because obviously that's, those are a lot, that's a lot cheaper packaging, you see what I mean? So go for that first. But if your product does come in a, in a dropper, keep it somewhere, especially like if it's a vitamin C because that will go off very quickly. All that opening and closing, it will go mm -hmm. off very quickly. So store it, like you say, medicine cabinet is great. Somewhere where it's not exposed to light. So medicine cabinet, uh, a drawer perhaps, it's also a good idea. I see these skincare fridges now. I don't know if you I have I was just one. gonna ask you about that. <laughs> but I see these skincare fridges. I, I mean, I don't have one. I, I, I don't personally think they, I think they're cute. I don't have space, so that's why I don't have one. Yeah, um, I've been sent probably like four of them in PR and I've given them away because I'm like, and I don't think they're that big either, are they? They never no. look that, you know, big enough to me. Yeah. So, so a, a bathroom cabinet is fine. That's no problem. If you have a dresser and you keep your products on a dresser, be mindful that, you know, you wake up in the morning, you open the curtains, so the sunlight comes in. So that can, depending where your dresser is, that can um, uh, go onto your products. Some people I see keep their products in a drawer. Maybe they have a dresser, but they keep it in their in a drawer. That's mm -hmm. fine. A cool, dark place is, is all you need. Um, especially if the product doesn't have the primary protection of the packaging that it comes in. And so long as you're not using a very sort of high potency vitamin C that's irritating your skin, it can be easily combined with your niacinamide, with your alpha arbutin or kojic acid. It can easily be combined. Vitamin C okay. and sunscreen are good to go. Whether you are using things like um, uh, 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 lactic acid, glycolic acid, all the sort of exfoliating acids, good to go. Whether you are using hyaluronic acid or niacinamide, good to go whether you are using things like uh pigmentate uh, other pigmentation um serums of arbutin kojic acid licorice extract you're good to go so you are the only thing that will stop you is the um is, is your skin the tolerance of your skin mm -hmm. whether your skin is irritated that's the only thing that will stop you and also um looking at especially things that where a percentage makes a difference in terms of what 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 amount of the of the ingredient is in the final product so vitamin c again if you are up there at 20 percent, you might find that that in itself is causing you an irritation so mm -hmm. none of your other products and ingredients are going to be suitable because your your skin is irritated already so you can combine vitamin c with anything you want if your skin is tolerant and you are using the right percentage of vitamin c the only thing i wouldn't necessarily combine together is a vitamin c and a vitamin a that's the only thing i wouldn't combine together necessarily because vitamin a has a high potential of irritation anyway and mm -hmm. therefore you don't want to then put two things together that could potentially cause you more irritation that's the only two things i wouldn't combine which is why i always say to my clients leave your vitamin a for nighttime and make that your thing at night and your vitamin c put it amongst your daytime product yeah that's where it's going to do the most for you anyway
I'd always say, if you are struggling to see where to spend your money or whether you should invest in treatments or not, book yourself in for a consultation with an esthetician because they will be able to guide you. Mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is the area to spend your money on. It's like when I have people come to see me and I say, so what do you do for pigmentation? And they go, yeah, I use vitamin C, but you know, I'm not really seeing any difference. And I'm like, okay, now I can actually, you've given me something that I can help make a difference for you in your skin because then I tell them about, you know, pigmentation and vitamin C and the, the interaction with that. And then it clicks in and then it makes sense. If you are struggling to see where to spend your money, go and get some advice from a, a qualified yeah. and insured esthetician. And then after that, you, you're much more, much more clued up into what you're spending. Right. You're definitely not on your own. And the, the fastest way to healthy skin is, to, is with an esthetician because an esthetician will look after your entire skin health not just the problem that you have today. Make sure you're following Deja. I will leave all her information in the description box where you can find out how to make an appointment at Westroom Aesthetics. Um, I'll leave the link to the Black Skin Directory. All that information will be in the description box. Make sure you check it out. Make sure you also follow me on social. I will leave that in the description box as well. And I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.